How's this for good news? God wants you to take time off from work. Yes, to rest and relax, kick up your feet, chill out. The Bible has a lot to say about slowing down your life, how a change of pace and maybe a change of place can allow God to give you a fresh change of perspective. Here's Tim. All right. Hey, happy summer, church. Yes. Colleen and I are so pumped for our first ever sabbatical. Hey, if you're new to Liquid, I'm Pastor Tim. My wife and I started this church way back in 2001 BC. That's before COVID. Here's a fun photo. Who's that young whippersnapper? That is a 20-something Tim. What happened to young Tim? I ate him. <laughs> It's fun to look back and celebrate all that God's done over the last two decades. Uh, If you knew, we started this church back in 2001, two weeks after 9-11 actually, with a couple dozen uh, young adults gathered around a red velvet couch and some candles. And and we've seen Jesus do what he promised. He said, I'm going to build my church. And Jesus has built uh, his church here in New Jersey, three thriving campuses, seven of them actually, across New Jersey. Can we welcome our live locations? Say hi to Princeton, Passaic, Mountainside, Garwood, Somerset, Middlesex Church Online. We're so glad you're here today. I'm just going to share from my heart some fresh dreams that I'm asking God to plant deep in our soul as Colleen and I go on our first extended ministry break, a 10-week sabbatical. It's going to start on August 12th, and then we'll be returning on October 20th, really to refuel us for another decade of serving the Lord here at Liquid. Uh, I'm so thankful to our board of trustees who I report to for this gracious gift of sabbatical. This is just a chance to kind of catch our breath, rest, recalibrate, and ask the Lord to replenish the soil in our soul for the next decade in ministry. Um, I've been a pastor for 23 years, and um, it's been a joy. But I'll be honest, I'm a little tired. I'm ready for a rest. And today I want to talk to you about the rest of God. Now, I don't mean the rest of God like he's incomplete in some way. What I mean is, is that God wants to give you his rest this summer. I'm talking about physical rest, emotional rest, mental rest, spiritual rest. In fact, that's one of the most beautiful invitations that Jesus makes to his followers in the Gospel of Matthew. He says, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you what, church? I will give you rest. Do you hear it? It's just this beautiful invitation to all of us, pastors, teachers, construction workers, business people, mommies, daddies, to experience the rest of God, which is pretty counterculture right now in a a world that kind of emphasizes bigger, better, faster, don't slow down, achieve, achieve, more, more, more. And into that manic drive for more, listen to that whisper, Jesus. He's just saying, hey, 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 come on, come on. Denise, come on, come to me. You, Keon, all who are weary and burdened, and I'll give you real rest. Rest of God. Doesn't that sound good? It does to me. Uh, After 23 years, I gladly receive my Savior's gracious invitation to rest on a 10-week sabbatical. I began serving the Lord in full-time pastoral ministry in 2001. So that's me. I just left teaching high school at the encouragement of my mentor and pastor, Peter Pendel. And Colleen and I, we had no idea what the Lord had planned. Uh, For those of you who are new to Liquid, can I show you some fun photos from our early days as a church? One of our first outreaches was a thing we called the Gas Buy-Down. This is way back in 2007 when gas was up to $1.99 a gallon. And so to serve our neighbors, we bought out an Exxon and gave away gas for 99 cents. We called it prayer at the pump. We had cars, hundreds of cars lined up around the block. They pulled up to the pump. We washed their windshield. We filled their tank. And then we just prayed for them. You know, I looked at that and I was like, man, with gas prices today, it might be time for another gas buy down. Amen. But this is a real big risk for our fledgling church. We didn't have a building, money very tight. We didn't know what we were doing, but we had 75 big-hearted volunteers. This is the original dream team right here, okay? We had this pioneer spirit, like, hey, let's put our faith in action and and love our neighbors in practical ways with no strings attached. And we just had this this crazy sense that, hey, to reach people no one's reaching, we got to do things no one's doing. And so we even put up an infamous billboard on Speedwell Avenue in, two, in, uh, in Morristown. And you can kind of see here, it says, down with stuffy religion. There's Liquid Church. What we didn't know is it would be placed right next to the billboard for the rock station WDHA. So that was kind of a fun little contrast. Look, we had services, four services, two in the morning, two at night. And hey, over the last 17 years, we have been on a, a roller coaster ride with Jesus. A lot of ups and downs from this kind of scrappy, portable startup church that met in hotels and high schools, this multi-site campuses with, with these four miracle mergers. We've been together, we've been on this journey, feeding the homeless, serving families with special needs, bringing clean drinking water to 
thirsty people all over the world and seeing, I think most importantly in my heart, over 3,500 men and women, boys and girls get baptized in Jesus' name. Who praise God for that? Those are my own kids that back in here. Again, only Jesus can get the credit. Heaven's more crowded, friends. And Colleen and I are just filled with joy. We're just like so humbled that to feel like, man, God, why would you pick us to give us a front row seat to see so many lives changed by the Holy Spirit? But there have been plenty of challenges too. Um, leading our church through COVID, I'll be honest with you, hardest three years of my leadership life. Our buildings were physically closed, staff distance for over a year. And on top of it, there was political division and racial reckoning, economic turmoil. We've survived two recessions as a church, 2008 and 2020. And then there's just the ongoing moral scandals in the global church, you know? Like how discouraging was it last month, right? That Tony Evans, Robert Morris, Bill Hybels, Carl Hens, you know, Robbie Zacharias, Mars Hill, the Catholic Church, the Southern Baptist is so discouraging. Barnett reported 46% of pastors considered quitting during the pandemic. Personally, the thought of quitting has never occurred to me. Um, I need you to know, I believe Jesus called me to pastor liquid for, for my whole life. Uh, but like a lot of pastors, I'm, I'm a little tired of leading through the bleeding. And so I'm receiving God's gracious invite to take a sabbatical, which is really this extended season of rest and step away from my day-to-day -day responsibilities as a lead pastor with the goal of just inviting the Holy Spirit to restore and replenish and revitalize the soil of my soul. Now, how many of you have heard of a college professor taking a sabbatical? You've heard of that, yeah? You know, for a, semester, for a semester or two to go like do some research or write a book. And the idea is that your mind, your body and your soul always needs a season at some point of strategic withdrawal from your work so that the soil can be replenished with nutrients for a future season of fruitfulness. It's interesting, if you do some reading, more and more companies are actually offering sabbaticals to invest in their employees' health. I came across this Harvard Business Review who did an article that they did a piece on the transformative power of sabbaticals. And they talked about how companies, leading companies like Nike and Whole Foods, REI or Patagonia, even American Express and Microsoft, they all offer sabbaticals now to protect their people from burnout. And what they're finding is it turns out that rest is not only good for employee health, but it's good for the bottom line too. Forbes magazine said companies with sabbaticals actually have half the turnover rate. So it's a win-win. Don't miss this, those of you who uh, run companies or you lead teams. Gen Z values paid time off as much as salary. Did you know that? They don't see working 80 hours a week as a badge of honor. The next gen wants to know you care about their health and their well-being. So sabbaticals are becoming actually a popular recruiting tool for attaining next generation talent. I just found that, that fascinating. They're catching up because that concept of sabbatical doesn't come from Harvard or Nike. It's actually God's idea. In fact, we see the first concept of sabbatical introduced in the Old Testament in Leviticus chapter 25. It is in your mobile app. I'm going to open my Bible here. God commands his people, that is Israel, to observe what he called a sabbatical year. I want you to listen to this command from Leviticus chapter 25. It says this. The Lord said to Moses at Mount Sinai, Speak to the Israelites and say to them, when you enter the land I'm going to give you, that's the promised land, the land itself must observe a what, church? A Sabbath to the Lord. For six years, sow your fields, and for six years, prune your vineyards and gather their crops. But in the seventh year, the land is to have a year of Sabbath rest. A what? A Sabbath to the Lord. Do not sow your fields. Don't prune your vineyards. Do not reap what grows of itself or harvest the grapes of your untended vines because the land is to have a year of what, church? A year of rest, the rest of God. In other words, the Lord tells his people, hey, you're farmers, you're, you're raising crops. I want you to work for six years straight, go at it. But the seventh year, I want you to let your fields go fallow. The land is to have a year of rest, which actually gives the soil time to replenish the nutrients. You know why? So it can be even more fruitful in the following season. Guys, you just read where the concept of sabbatical comes from. And it's actually brilliant. Did you know this? Modern agricultural experts have studied this. They have found that if a farmer plants the same field over and over, year after year, it produces less and less fruit. The soil actually becomes infertile. You can't grow anything. But if you rotate your field, so if you have seven fields, you only plant six, and you rotate the fallow one every year, guess what? The soil naturally replenishes the nutrients, you get a tenfold harvest the following year. And the spiritual principle is simple. The soil of your soul needs rest and 
renewal. Understand work is not a curse. Work is a gift from God. I love to work. But over time, understand it extracts energy. Strength, power goes out from you, like Jesus said. Who touched me? Power's gone out from me. It actually depletes your wisdom, your, your reserve over decades, especially in ministry. Um, being pastor, it's the joy of my life. It's a sacred calling. It's what I love to do. But there are plenty of pressures, for better or worse. Um, one, of the, one of the worst things is you're, you're kind of a public person. Can I tell you something funny that happened on Tuesday? Just don't share this with anybody, okay? I went for a colonoscopy on Tuesday, okay? Welcome to your 50s, okay? And uh, those, anybody else, best nap of your life. Uh, so I go, and the nurse is like, she's like, okay, she, you need to take off your clothes and, and put on this hospital gown, and it's open in the back. You know what I'm saying? It's like wide open. And she's like, just land this hospital gurney, and, and, and you know, and so I'm just kind of, ro- you know, I'm just laying there and everything, and she goes, okay, doctor's going to be here in just a minute. She goes, if you would, just roll over to the side and put your arm over the side of the bed. This is a pretty vulnerable position, yeah? And as I'm laying there, I hear a voice, hi, Pastor Tim. <laughs> hey, hey, hey. One of the nurses goes to liquid. Hey, how you doing? And I hear, guys, this is my pastor. And three other nurses come over. And they go, what church? She goes, liquid church. She goes, oh, I've heard of that. My niece sings on your worship team. Hi, ladies. And these three nurses were were just chatting as I wait for my colonoscopy. There's no weird like church weird, okay? It's just normal in the life of a pastor, You're just a public person out front, but behind the scenes, the pressures, I'll just let you know they're profound. I'm not looking for pity. I just want to let you in kind of like on Secret Life of Pastors. As a pastor, understand, you are the first to hear about a new crisis, a tragedy, a devastating diagnosis every single week. Like you're the first to get a phone call when someone gets cancer. Doctor first, then you. When somebody's marriage falls apart, their spouse is unfaithful, they get divorce papers served, you find out first. There's not a week that goes by where a child is uh, not going through crisis. A child comes out to her parents or is hospitalized with depression. As a shepherd, we're the first to get that phone call. And I need you to know something. It's the honor of my life. It's a sacred privilege to represent Jesus in those situations. It's to come alongside hurting sheep as a loving shepherd and provide care to hurting people. But it's also heavy because there's a weight to people's souls. You know what I'm talking about? Like, like you're dealing with people's fine china, their griefs, their joys, their burdens. In church of 100 people, you hear about a, 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 a crisis, you know, an unusual crisis every other week. Church of like ours, it's every day. So the unusually tragic, that's just normal. Don't mishear me. I love being your shepherd. I love you. But I'm looking forward to being a civilian for 10 weeks and just receiving the rest of God. You know why? So I can continue to love you well. And just regather and recharge my strength and and serve you with joy for another decade of ministry. So, just to be clear, this sabbatical I'm taking, it's not because I'm burned out or because of any secret failure. In fact, after 23 years, I'm still in love with Jesus and my wife. Praise God. My faith is strong. Our family is strong. My marriage is strong. Amen? There's the love of my life. We're going to be married 26 years this July. Can we hear it for Colleen? My best friend in the world. We're more in love than ever. We're empty nesters now. Our daughter Chase just graduated from Wheaton College. She's headed actually to, uh, to grad school. My son, my son Walker, son's out, guns out. He, he just finished freshman year at Liberty University. He turned 20, and now it's just like a camera shows up and a shirt comes off for all the photos, you know? I turned 50. I just keep my shirt on now. But our, our kids love the Lord. We love them. So I want you to know I'm healthy. I'm in a good place. All the indicator lights on my dashboard, they're blinking green. I just want to keep it that way. So this sabbatical is a chance to change the oil in my engine, rotate my tires a little bit, so I can keep trucking and serve Jesus for another 100,000 miles, God willing. So I'm excited to receive the rest of God. But that's me, that's my story. But let me flip it around, because that's what preachers do, and just ask, how about you? Are you receiving the rest of God? Because it's not just pastors. Plenty of you are in draining jobs and situations. You've got workplace demands or seasons as a as a parent with littles at home, and it's just emotionally exhausting. And here's the thing. If you at some point don't call a timeout and allow the soil of your soul to rest for a season, we do violence to ourselves. You are a human being, not a human doing. Created for a Sabbath rhythm of work and rest, work and rest. 
So let me just kind of ask right now, just a, a participation moment. How do you feel right now at the start of summer? Scale of one to 10. How many of you are nine or 10? You're like, I am well rested, mind, body, and soul. Okay, no hands. <laughs> How many of you are one or two? You're like skidding into summer sideways with your hair on fire. You're like, I need a sabbatical. Where are you going? I'm coming. Listen, you don't have to wait 23 years to take a rest, all right? God wants to give you one every seven days. It's called the Sabbath. Everyone say Sabbath. Sabbath. It's where we get the word sabbatical from. The root word is sabbatical, Sabbath. It's a core spiritual discipline that God commands every Christ father to practice every week. If you remember from the book of Exodus, God's people were not free people when they started out. They were slaves in Egypt. And all they did was work 24-7 under Pharaoh. Pharaoh was your classic slave driver. He's like, work faster, harder, more bricks, less straw, work, 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 24 hours a day, seven days a week, because that's what slaves do. And God said, Moses, I'm sending to you to lead my people out of bondage into freedom. And you know the rest. God declares war on Pharaoh. He sends 10 plagues, and now river turns to blood. Hail, locust, frogs. He kills the firstborn son, parts the Red Sea for his people. They follow Charlton Heston all the way through and come on this, this dry land called the, the promised land. Well, actually, it's the desert. He says, before you go to the promised land, I'm going to give you 10 commandments, 10 family rules. Honor the Lord. No stealing, no murder, no lying. But the fourth commandment is one we tend to ignore. God said, I want you to observe the Sabbath day by keeping it what? Holy or set apart as the Lord your God has commanded you. You're not going to be like everybody else. You're going to have six days each week for your ordinary work, but the seventh day is a what church? A Sabbath day of rest. To just chill on in Netflix? No. Dedicated to the Lord your God. And on that day, no one in your household may do any work. In fact, the people who work for you, all your male and female servants, they must what? Rest as you do. That's, that's how important rest is to God. And he says, here's why. Remember that you were once slaves in Egypt, but the Lord your God brought you out with his strong hand and a powerful arm. And that's why the Lord your God has commanded you, not suggested, commanded you to what? Rest on the Sabbath day. It's funny because we're having this, you know, oh my gosh, there's going to be 10 commandments in, in classrooms. Well, here's one that everyone ignores. God says, take the day off every seven days. And you're like, why? And God's like, because you're not slaves anymore. I'm not Pharaoh, I'm your father. And your worth to me isn't based on your work. You're actually my beloved child, so I'm setting you free from 24-7 productivity. I'm giving you the rest of God. It's this beautiful gift called the Shabbat. That's the Hebrew word. Try, try Jewish word, try Shabbat, ready? Shabbat, nanu nanu, Shabbat. It means stop, rest from your work. Now listen, you don't have to live in Egypt to know. In America, work can easily become an idol. Even if your boss isn't, isn't a dictator, something like, I work for Pharaoh. Even if you don't work for Pharaoh, a lot of us have a little Pharaoh inside of our heads telling us you can't stop. You can't rest. Because our culture tells us your value and your identity is what you achieve or what you produce. And so that's why so many of us overfunction. We have this ancient striving. And into that, your heavenly father says, receive my gift of rest. Every seven days, I want you to observe the Shabbat, a Sabbath. Biblically speaking, it's a 24-hour block of time to do four things. The first is you stop all your work, paid and unpaid. No meetings, no texts, no phone calls. No running around with your chicken like your head cut off to the mall, checking off your to-do list. On the Sabbath, you actually embrace your limits. And you let go of the illusion that you are indispensable to running the world. You're, it's an act, it's, it's a radical act of saying, guess what? My father's on the throne and he's managing the world quite well without me. So you stop your work so you can rest. Everyone say rest. Rest. Ah, rest. Physically, mentally, emotionally. Why? Because that's what God did when he finished the work of creation. God works six days, he creates everything you see and then what do you do? He rested. You're made in his image. So on the Sabbath, you do things that recreate. That's why we call it recreation. We recreate. You take a nap. You go for a hike. You play with your kids. You do whatever brings you Sabbath delight. It's interesting. In Genesis, after God finishes work, you know what he said? He just goes, "Woo, this is good. He took time to delight in his creation. So Sabbath is a chance for you to ask once a week, you know what? 
What brings me joy and delight? Is it reading a book in a hammock? Is it cooking a good meal with friends, listening to music, going to the beach? For me on the Sabbath, I almost always turn off my phone, social media, so that you can just actually get in a, in a spirit of worship. It's a day unto the Lord. It's not just a Saturday or a weekend. You worship the Lord, you sing, you read his word, you commune with the Holy Spirit. This is why we gather on the Sabbath. Did you know that for worship? It's the Lord's day. Now understand, for traditional Jews, the Sabbath starts on sundown on Friday, and it ends sundown Saturday. Christians, Christ followers, move the Sabbath to Sunday, the first day of the week. Anybody know why? In honor of Jesus' resurrection. Yeah, yeah. Now I understand this. Taking a Sabbath may be challenging for you. You're like, I don't, I, Tim, that's real. That's unbelievable. I'm glad you're, you know, a pastor and you've got time. But I got little kids. <laughs> or I work on weekends, bro. Don't be legalistic. Be kind to yourself. You may have to piece together your Sabbath. Take eight hours on a Friday, five on a Saturday. Piece together your own rhythm. Jesus said this, listen to this. He says, the Sabbath is made for man, not man for the Sabbath. In other words, the Sabbath isn't something you add to your to-do list. <laughs> it's your father's gift to a weary soul. Your father says, I see how hard you work and I want to give you my rest. The rest of God. One day a week, you rest from your work. Then watch this. You go back to work from a place of rest. That's how you be my son or my daughter. So catch this. The Sabbath is a day of rest every seven days. Sabbatical is a season of rest every seven years. That's where it comes from. Uh, I want to let you know about our church if you're new. Taking Sabbath and sabbaticals is an integral part of our staff culture here at Liquid. We actually teach our staff that their family is their first ministry. And you need Sabbath every week to stay healthy for the long haul. Um, we just have this core conviction that ministry is a marathon. It's not a sprint, okay? Okay. That's why you're seeing all these headlines, by the way. That's my personal read of what's going on in the culture right now. Too many pastors and church leaders start out strong. They sprint out of the gate with good intentions and, and ministry success only to burn out and fall by the well side, the wayside and fail just to finish well. Why? They neglected to set a sustainable pace for their souls over the long haul, 10, 20, 30, 40 years. So in 2021... We started a new program for our staff here at Liquid called SPLASH. It stands for Sabbatical Program for Leadership and Staff Health. And uh, in the spirit of sabbatical, our staff receives seven days of paid sabbatical at every five-year milestone of leadership at Liquid. So when you're here five years, you get a week-long mini sabbatical. At 10 years, you get two additional weeks. This is not vacation. This is sabbatical. 15 years with three weeks. You can add to your vacation. But it's been a joy for me just to see a lot of our longtime staff experience this. We encourage and we say, hey, use that time to do things that restore your soul, to travel, cook, garden, take a silent retreat, learn a new language, read the biography of a missionary, make memories with your kids. One of our leaders actually used his sabbatical to take an epic cross-country bicycle trip with his son. He said, man, it was a core family memory I never thought I'd have time for. Some of you guys know, you guys know Sarah Nilsson? She runs our Clean Water Cafe. She's on sabbatical right now in Florida. She emailed me. She said, if all goes as planned, I'll be swimming with the manatees on the 20th anniversary of my mom's passing, seeing family, resting in God's presence, capturing all the sunsets over the ocean I possibly can, I thank you for this time to disconnect, recharge, and spend time with my family. I love that. You gotta hear my heart. As a church, we wanna invest in our pastors, our ministry staff. We want the soil of their soul to be replenished so they can stay close to Jesus and serve the Lord faithfully, producing fruit over the long haul. Amen? Can we hear it for our staff, for our pa your campus pastor? Come on. We've got some praise from men and women we have serving here. So you guys want to know what we're going to do, what Colleen and I are doing during our sabbatical? Because we ain't sitting home eating bonbons, okay? <laughs> our 10-week sabbatical is going to start August 12th. So you need to know I'm not leaving right away. In fact, I'll be preaching through most of July and August. And then I'm going to return to the pulpit actually on October 20th. But what we did is we actually worked with a sabbatical coach to divide it into four stages. The first is rest. First three weeks, we're just going to spend with our family resting, catch our breath, physically, mentally, emotionally from the grind of ministry. So what that means around mid-August, you won't see me in the office or, or the church that much. I'm going to kind of turn off my email, no meetings, praise God, go dark on social. So I can just spend, you know, just rest from the daily noise and let the world kind of go quiet. And we'll use those first three weeks to uh, drive our son back to college, move Chase to grad school in North Carolina. Now, what's interesting is my sabbatical was originally planned for 2020, but a little something called, came along called COVID. <laughs> So it was delayed three years as I need to, you know, kind of help guide our church through the pandemic. But when I look back, I actually see God's sovereign hand of t in, the, in the delay. 
both our kids launched and left the house. So it gives us more freedom to travel and really rest the sabbatical and reflect. That's the second stage of this. Uh, Colleen and I are going away on a marriage retreat for ministry couples. We're going to spend a week out west with a spiritual director, a mentor couple who's been in ministry for 45 years. Give us a chance to just look back on the last 23 years and say, Lord, we just praise you for the highs, grieve the lows, and then start dreaming about the next decade. It's interesting. We increasingly feel a call, this pull, to do ministry together out of the overflow of our marriage. We're not sure how that looks yet, but we're kind of excited about it. Um, as some of you know, Colleen has been sensing that her season as a marketplace uh, executive may be coming to an end and kind of feeling this pull towards ministry. She actually just celebrated 32 years running her company. I'm so proud of her. But she's kind of facing this crossroads because AI has disrupted her sector, all that kind of stuff. But for two years, we've been praying about her possibly transitioning from the marketplace to ministry from her career to a calling. So we're kind of we're excited about it. A little scared too, right, honey? A little like, ooh. <laughs> So our board graciously included Colleen on sabbatical so we can reflect on our calling together. So I would just ask you to pray for us. Pray for a spirit of discernment as we seek God's guidance. And revitalization. This is the part I'm really looking forward to. This is the travel and study part of my sabbatical. We are going to actually Greece and Turkey on a Bible study tour of the early church. We're going to fly to Istanbul in September and walk in the footsteps of the Apostle Paul visit some of the churches he planted in ancient Greece, Thessalonica, Ephesus, Philippi. We're going to actually tour the seven churches of Revelation. We're going to, we're going to visit the island of Patmos where John wrote the book of Revelation. And uh, I'm going to come back and share what I learned. When I return on October 20th, buckle up. <laughs> we're going to kick off a sermon series on Paul's missionary adventures in the book of Acts. And we're going to film content on location just like we did with Israel. And we're also gathering research so that Colleen and I can hopefully lead a church-wide Bible study tour of Greece and Turkey in 2025, just like we did with Israel. Now, those are two things for me, travel and study. They revitalize my soul. In fact, on the front of my journal, if you ever see my journal, it says this. It says, change of pace. This is my prescription. Change of pace plus change of place will change your perspective. In other words, when you dial back, when you slow down the speed of your life and step out of your routine, I think God gives you fresh revelation. That's what I'm asking God for on this sabbatical, fresh revelation. So you pray that for me. I'm asking God to just kind of reveal where liquid needs to go next, what, what we need to do to get Jesus' bride ready for his return. If I can give you a little hint of that, in my soul, I sense it has to do with deeper Bible engagement because our culture is getting darker by the minute. I don't know if you notice that the world is upside down and people are hungry for truth, but they're biblically illiterate. And that's a, a, a deepening burden that God's laying on my heart. Our kids and families need to know their Bible. Like, if you're going to love Jesus, you have to know his word. Amen? Colleen said something to me this week. She said, you know, the heart can't love what the mind doesn't know. And so we want God to really reveal his vision for renewed emphasis on Bible study, scripture memory at every level of ministry from kids all the way up. And so we're going to kind of even rethink some of our approach to preaching in small groups. Maybe we study whole books of the Bible in 2025. But that's an impression I have right now from the Holy Spirit that I'm taking with me on sabbatical and saying, Lord, would you confirm that and bring into sharper focus what that means for our church? So heads up, I'm going to hope to return with a change of perspective, and I hope you will too. You know, during our time away, you're in good hands. Our executive pastors, Pastor Dave, Pastor Kyra, our whole lead team, they're going to oversee our staff, and uh, I have 100% confidence in our team of pastors, our Board of Trustees, our campus pastors to lead a church while I'm gone. I need you to know this is the healthiest, wisest, most well-rounded group of leaders I've worked with in two decades. And then we'll prepare to return um, back in the pulpit on October 20th to share what's on my heart. And hopefully I'll be back brimming with new ideas and insights from the Holy Spirit, spiritually stronger than ever. You know, I've often said, I feel like God has placed a call in my life to spend my life leading one church and loving one woman. Let me tell you something. I'm going to call it out. That woman is Colleen, and that church is liquid. Amen? We are committed to being Jersey lifers. We raised our kids here. We love our family and, and church friends. And Lord willing, I'd love to serve as one of your pastors for another 10 or 15 more years. My, my goal is to, is to pass off a healthy, vibrant church to the next generation, finish strong in the pulpit, and kind of lean into the tape. So I'm going to ask you, would you please pray for us? Cover Colleen and I. We cover your prayers. 
ask the Holy Spirit really just to replenish the nutrients in the soil of our soul so we can be even more fruitful for Christ the next season. I also just want to thank our board of trustees. Um, They have just been such wonderful cheerleaders uh, for us as we plan this. I got to tell you, not all pastors have this. We feel so blessed by their care for us as, as, as people. Their care for our marriage, for our family. I'm so thankful for their wise counsel and investment in our health. And honestly, guys, I hope to serve you as a pastor for the rest of my life. I, hear my heart. I have no plans to make headlines with some scandal. I, I, do, I don't want to be in some documentary on Hulu. You know what I'm talking about? <laughs> I'll be faithful to one woman in church during my one lifetime. And I, I, when I grow up, I want to be like my role model, Peter Pendell, who hired me 23 years ago. He's been a spiritual father to me, showing me, modeling what it's been like to be a faithful pastor for the long haul. Peter actually serves on our board of trustees. He's been a faithful pastor of Jesus' church for 48 years. And yesterday, he and his wife, Ilona, celebrated 56 years of marriage. Can we hear it for them? That's faithfulness. That should be in the headlines. It's in the headlines in heaven. Every pastor needs a pastor. And I've been blessed to have Peter as minor over two decades. And so Peter wanted to come out and pray over us and commission our sabbatical to the Lord. So Liquid Church, would you welcome my mentor and spiritual father, Pastor Peter Pendell? Thank you, Peter. I love you, my friend. Thank you for you. Hey, Liquid Church, it is a joy for me to represent the Board of Trustees this day and to tell you that we wouldn't, couldn't be more excited about Tim and Colleen taking this time for Sabbath rest I've been watching them up close for a long time now, on stage, off stage, and I have absolute confidence in them to stay the course because they've been careful to nurture their hearts, their hearts and their relationship with Jesus and with each other, not just growing some amazing skills on how to lead a church, though they've done that too, but I'm excited to see what God is going to do in them during this sabbatical and what he's going to do through them when they return. So let me invite Pastor Kyra to join me on stage as we pray over Tim and Colleen and we together commission them. In fact, I'm gonna invite all our campuses to stand together to support them. And this is a prayer of commissioning based on Paul's prayer in Ephesians chapter three. So would you lift your voice and pray it out loud with me and stretch out your hand and, and pray with me? We humbly humble ourselves and pray to the Father, the creator of everything in heaven and on earth. We pray that from your glorious unlimited resources, we will empower Tim and Colleen with inner strength through your spirit. Then Christ will feel at home in their hearts as they walk with you. Their roots will grow down into your love and and keep them strong. And may they have the power to understand, as all your people should, how wide, how long how high and how deep your love really is. May they experience the love of Christ, though it is too great to understand fully. Then they will be made complete with all the fullness of life and power that you alone can give. Now all glory to God who is able through his mighty power at work within us to accomplish infinitely more than we might ask or think. Glory to him in liquid church and in Christ Jesus through all generations forever and ever, amen. Father, we, we come before you. We love our pastor and, and Colleen. We, we love them because they have served you so faithfully. And so now Lord, as they step back and take a break, would you fill them with love for Jesus in a new and a fresh way and with each other as well? And would you give them discernment, Lord, and send them back to us with vision and calling and new ideas of what they need to lead us into in the coming days? And would you be glorified by each step they take during this time away from us that they might return filled with you, Lord, ready to spill over to the rest of us? We thank you for what you're going to do, and we pray in the matchless name of Jesus the Christ. And all God's people said, Amen. 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 Thank you, Peter. Love you, brother. Hey, thanks for watching the Liquid YouTube channel. And don't stop here. I want to invite you to be part of our online community. Just subscribe to this channel so you don't miss a single video or live stream. And share with a friend. You know, everybody's welcome at Liquid. 
If you are blessed by this message, you can support our ministry by clicking the Give Now button to help us continue to reach people around the world for Jesus Christ. Thanks so much for watching. God bless you.